Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and today uh, we have the guest as well, which is going to be Twitch chat, which is featured on our left. Or actually, that's right, so I guess that would be left. The world we live in these days is pretty fucked. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and read the part one damage over time changes, and I know I am late uh, into going over this, so if you guys don't really want to see this part, you can just skip to part two, uh, which you should see right here. Alright, so let's go right on into part one. So, for the last several leagues, abilities that use damage over time mechanics such as poison or poison and ignite have been present in a large majority of endgame builds. And this is true with like double dipping essentially. There was an ignite prolift meta for a little while. Uh, poison has been meta ever since it pretty much came out and so on. Uh, because the hit dealing more damage meant the ignite had more base damage. Um, let's see, damage to scale. This has meant such modifiers applying to the hit and cumulative effect on the ignite's base damage. In addition to applying normally to the ignite's fire damage value similarity, the enemy's fire just applying to the hit meant the ignite would have had a lower base damage. This is basically explaining what double dipping is in like the actual science, opposed to us retards just calling it double dipping. Uh, and since the ignite deals fire damage, would also lower the damage taken from the ignite. This was commonly referred to as double dipping builds that focused on the damage types of the poison, bleed, or ignite they caused were capable of receiving significantly larger to increase their damage. Okay. We decided to make some changes in the system for a few reasons. Firstly, builds that didn't use poison or ignite required significantly more investment to reach the same damage values, and that's when they started releasing things like elemental overload as well, uh, which actually just ended up helping double dipping if you weren't crit <laughs> uh, for fire and ignite. Let's see, and we'd like to level the playing field to bring more builds to closer power level and progression. Secondly, we're balancing the power of items and modifiers. We always had to take the potential for double dipping into account. We had to reduce the amount of power of core passives and common items that are effective for ignite and poison builds to the point where they're not worth the investment for other builds. Wow, so that sounds actually really cool then. That sounds like a huge rework to quite a few items then. Lastly, Ignite and Poison had to be reduced in power so they were at a desired damage level after heavy investment in effects that double dipped, making them virtually worthless for builds that didn't take advantage of these systems, creating another trap. Hmm, trap? You're gonna, you're gonna fix traps too, Kappa? Uh, for players to fall into if they weren't aware of the... I don't know what this word is. Minuta? Of the game mechanics? Minute? That's not minute, is it? Man, YouTube makes me feel more stupid every day. All right. In the beta for the Fall of Oriath, we're going to be trying out the new changes to damage over time system. Uh, let's see. Minutia. Skills will calculate their Ignite, Poison, Bleed values as separate damage value. Taken straight from the base, added uh, damage to the skill. This will give skills that deal fire damage a minimum and maximum Ignite damage per second value that will be rolled on Ignites that the skill causes. Poison, Bleed, and Ignite damage values will be based on... I'll be based on the base damage of the skill and then affected by appropriate damage modifiers. Some damage modifiers will affect both the hit and the ignite, poison, or bleed, while some will only affect one. Isn't that kind of like double dipping still? Oh, no, I guess it's not double dipping. It just works for both. As an example, ignite can be modified by modifiers to burning damage, fire damage, uh, damage over time, general damage modifiers, and resistances. This means that increased spell, attack, or weapon damage will no longer influence ignite. Interesting. Uh, poison or bleed damage at all. So spell, attack, weapon will no longer influence them. It also means that while modifiers of fire damage will still apply to both Wait, apply both to a hit and the ignite it causes since the ignite's damage is the same as the hit's rather than being to the damage, okay. There is no cumulative effect. The modifier applying to the hit has no effect at all on the ignite. So yeah, this is going to be a lot easier to calculate your damage too. To compensate for the loss of damage and the removal of double dipping, the damage of the player ignites, poisons, and bleeding have been doubled. Increases to these effects on the passive tree have been boosted as well, and additional poisoning and bleeding bonuses have been added to some weapon clusters on top of their existing stats. Bleeding is also being changed for players so that it does not so that it does more damage while the target is stationary. So basically, that that's good. It's only for players, though. It says, um, making it more versatile and 
more versatile source of, uh, source of damage. Previously, it dealt only one sixth its damage to the target while stationary. Now it will deal half of it instead. So one sixth to three sixth. The ratio will remain unchanged for bleeding caused by monsters, so you'll be able to stand still. Oh wait, so you're able to stand still to mitigate the majority of. Okay, so that's good. That's good. We'll be testing this new system out in the beta. The goal for poison and bleeding is to create an additional mechanic that can be invested in as an optional way to boost your damage with a damage over time component. We intended that if you take poison or bleed bonuses in the passive tree and equip it with items with powerful new ailment damage increases, it will be a reliable way to boost your damage on high health or mobile targets. The goal for Ignite is to have it to be far more reliable ailment for fire damage characters without heavy investment in uh, resistance reduction and double dipping mechanics while still allowing for a focused ignite damage build. We're going to be changing a few existing support gems. An example of this is the increased burning damage support, which will now grant a multiplicative bonus. That's huge. That is huge. What is it like 70% more da or ignite damage or something then? We'll be talking about others in the future. We'll also be adding new support gems. I'm excited about that. Um, to further man, you know what this one right here will be adding new support gems to further like characters improve damage I hope they don't just mean like one for bleed and one for ignite because that would be or one for bleed and one for like ignite like I want more than that. I want to be able to like play more than just like Either crit or vol pact or like non crit, you know um, And there are a few other ways, but it would just be cool to like make an entire new almost category of character or like could you imagine if you could convert a skills initial hit into pure damage over time like that'd be pretty interesting right so just something something else in a subsequent post earlier this week we're going to be in some more specific okay so this is this is the exact one right here so this is this is damage over time changes part two this one just came out okay Last week, so that's the one we just went over, uh, let's see, in this post we'll go over how these changes uh, will interact with various game mechanics and talk about some of the new mechanics we're introducing to improve damage growth and give investment options for characters. Okay, until now Path of Exile has had four status ailments, Ignite, Chill, Freeze, and Shock. These were usually referred to as elemental status ailments in the fall of or. or Oh, yeah. In the fall of Oriath, poison and bleed will now be considered ailments, just like freeze, shock, ignite, and chill. This means that the other ailments, they uh, other ailments, they aren't considered uh, skill effects and are unaffected by modifiers to skill effect duration, such as the increased duration support. There are now specific modifiers to bleed duration and poison duration in the passive tree. In addition. The skills Puncture and Viper Strike will now have a special property of treating Bleeding and Poison respectively as skill effects, allowing more bonuses to their duration on top of modifiers to ailment duration. We're also shortening the phrase status ailments to just ailments. That's cool. I like that. No more bullshit wording. So this is nice. They're actually adding in like full on bleed and poison without the need of, without the, I guess, necessity of having to go crit, which is cool. Well, at least from what I've read right now. Existing effects that stated that they uh, interacted with ailments have been renamed to clarify they only apply to elemental ailments, but we'll also be introducing new effects that apply to all ailments in future. Wait, in future? Or in the future, Kappa? Some features like Ascendancy class mechanics may be changed to apply to all ailments during the beta or after. This one's pretty big here. Damage, ailments, and critical strikes. Your critical damage multiplier will no longer influence Poison, Bleed, Ignite. Holy shit! Holy shit! What? You can no longer play Crit Ignite? I kinda like that. Wow! You cannot play like Crit Ignite. You can still play Crit Fire with like like Firestorm, for example, and not have to go Ember Wake or Taming. But that's just... I, I want to see, like, what they've introduced here, because Fire is my favorite element. Let's see. Your critical damage multiplier will not inflict or not influence Poison, Bleed, and Ignite damage. And same with Poison. Holy shit. As a result, these ailments no longer being based on final damage of your hit. Instead, players and monsters now have a property called Damage Multiplier for Ailments from Critical Strike... 
Oh my god, you know what this is reminding me of right here? Guys, this is like when you play an MMO and you try to PvP with PvE gear and you try to PvE with PvP gear. They're making critical strike multiplier for essentially damage over time now. That's fucking cool. That's fucking cool. That makes the game more diverse, man. I like it. I like it. There's a new stat coming in that's going to have a huge presence. Supposedly, you know, of course, if the builds don't work, then, you know. Vincept, what is this shit? I'm excited about that. This means that investing in Critical Strike Multiplier will have no direct effect on damage ailments. However, we'll be introducing a new keystone that lets a large portion of hit modifiers to Critical Strike Multiplier also apply to the skill's ailment damage at the cost of hit damage. Ha! Huh? See, that's what I was saying! That's exactly what I was saying before. Is there, you're able to convert almost the initial hit to damage over time. Holy fuck, GGG read my mind. Um, the goal is to create an avenue. I like that word, an avenue. For investment for characters that want to rely on their critical ailments for damage without it being the default and most efficient method of boosting damage for poison, bleed, and ignites. <gasps> I think I'm going to have to make a bow ignite character. Oh my god, this, this is making me want to play a bow character. I've never... I've never played a bow character before and enjoyed it. I might actually be able to make one. Ailment immunities. Some of Path of Exile, so this is like the end game stuff. Some of Path of Exile's most challenging bosses have all have always had inbuilt immunities to ailments. These were both to prevent certain ailments trivializing certain content. Basically perma freezing any boss, you know. And for thematic reasons, we're going to be removing the majority of these immunities so they do not punish ailment focused builds. This is also very important. We intend to make changes to Chill and Shock that we'll be trying out during the- Fuck yes! Okay, the reason why this is important is because the best way to Shock and Chill targets is basically just get more damage. And I feel that, you know, that shouldn't always be the way to do it. And of course, you don't have to now, you can go like Elemental Overload, but I feel like this is really, really important because this adds to- This basically allows you to play the game a different way, like I want to cry! I want to cry if this is actually, like, successful. Because Path of Exile has been, like, it's really fun, you know, during the start of the league. And then you play for, like, a month and you're like, well, what's new? Now, if there's, like, a whole new sense of, like, character progression and trying to do something, it's going to be beautiful, man. It's going to be so nice. Um, let's see. Making ailments more useful against very high health enemies. Look at that without them making the content too easy. So you can actually chill something. How shitty is it when you play a freeze-based build, like you're playing self-cast cold snap, and you're like, hmm, that's a triple essence mob. I know I can't chill it. I can't ever freeze it. Let me just use Vol Lightning Trap because I can't shock it either. Like that's, that's such a, thank you GGG for understanding, man. That's so good. We'll be revealing more information about this later. That, I want that. Some bosses that had freeze immunity will instead have a slow protection effect, so they won't be immobilized by, freed, uh, by freeze, instead they'll be slowed significantly. That's insane! Fuck yeah. Weapon elemental damage. Honestly, I don't ever play attack builds, but we'll go over it. The elemental damage with weapon stats uh, that were found on the passive tree, items, and weapon elemental damage supports have now been replaced with elemental damage with attack skills. Oh, what? Okay. This has two notable effects. These new stats now modify all the damage dealt by attack skills, not just the attack damage. This means that damage over time dealt by an attack such as an ignite, or, oh, or, oh, such as ignite and secondary damage, including the explosion from Infernal Blow, will be affected as well. We've made this change to create a natural increase in ignite damage for characters investing in elemental attacks as a benefit for fire characters. Yo. These stats now apply to unarmed effects? Ooh. This was necessary. This was a necessary result of the change. It opens up new... What did I tell you about that word? Avenues for elemental unarmed attack builds. 
We'll be monitoring exactly how this affects Facebreaker and Doriani's fist balance. So for people who don't know, there's no such thing as Elemental Unarmed. Or maybe there's one build. But Elemental Unarmed is a meme, it's not real. Elemental damage in Path of Exile has one way to scale, attack speed. You get as much attack speed as possible, you get as much crit and crit multi, and that's it. There's no other way to play it. They're saying that you can play Elemental builds now a different way. Unarmed has like one of the slowest base attack speeds in the game, it's like 1.0. Maybe some two-handed uniques have like 0.88 and below, like Morohi, maybe. But this is like, this is huge, man. This is just like, this is like you're playing like a disciplined priest in WoW, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, you have a new a new spec, it's called Conflagration. And you're like, what does that do? And they're like, read the patch notes. By the way, for the record, I've played WoW for like 15 hours, and that's it. We have slightly reduced the damage bonus of the weapon elemental damage support gem as it was too ubiquitous, ubiquitous, ubiqui I don't know, ubiquitous? I don't know how to pronounce that word. For attack builds. Even those that didn't convert all their attack damage to elemental damage, it has been changed to a more elemental damage to attacks and will now be renamed appropriately. So an example of this for people who don't know is like if you use Hatred. Hatred is a aura that pretty much almost any physical attack build uses because it gives you a multiplier of damage that is elemental based off of your physical. So you can have added fire and you can have like Hatred and then Wed which is weapon elemental damage, would be a bigger multiplier or a larger multiplier than like another fatty like physical damage node. Or sorry, physical damage uh, gem. Rare and magic item mods. We'll be, it, we will be introducing new selection of suffix modifiers to certain weapons, including increased poison damage on daggers, claws, swords, and bows. Local chance to poison. This is a suffix on daggers, claws, swords, and bows. Increase bleeding damage on maces, axes, swords, and bows. Local chance to cause bleeding. Um, increased ignite damage on scepters, staves, and wands. Chance to ignite! Whoa! Do we get chance to ignite, freeze, and shock? On staves and wands. You know what that's saying? It's saying get fucked daggers. That's what it's saying. Oh, wait, but you can still use a scepter. No. You can't. Yes, you can. I'm retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can use a scepter. So get fucked, daggers. Which means you can still shield charge. That's still fine, then. Okay. We'll also be adding powerful new prefixes. Uh, prefix modify... Pr powerful. Uh, to weapons with values equivalent to spell damage bonuses. These are exclusive with the primary weapon spell damage modifiers, so you can't have both of them. Wait, you can't have both... You can't have both one of these and a dedicated spell damage prefix. Fire damage on scepters, staves, and wands. Cold damage... Oh, so this rolls too? This will create new items uh, with benefits for different build styles. There are... F uh, these are the first of a larger selection of new item modifiers for equipment items. We'll be revealing more. So that's nice. They're adding new bases to craft on almost. And Blight doesn't do a Blight doesn't do that much damage, man. It's on the lower side of skills. Projectile damage, area damage, and skill damage over time. Some skills such as Essence Drain had a stat had a stat saying modifiers to spell damage apply to this skill's damage over time. Same thing with like Vortex as well. This affected all damage over time that was caused by that skill. In the fall of Oriath Beta, this will be replaced by an equivalent modifier that will only affect the specific damage over time effect that a skill inherently applies, not any others it causes due to stats on gear or supports, such as poison or decay. Previously, any damage over time applied by a hit was considered a projectile uh, projectile damage. If the hit was applied, it was considered as such. Damage over time is now never considered projectile damage, and so it is not naturally affected by modifiers to projectile damage. Some skills such as Caustic Arrow will gain a modifier which will allow modifiers to projectile damage to apply they're taking out this hidden bullshit, which I really like. Um, to the skill's inherent damage over time effect. Like the above modifier, this will not affect any other damage over time uh, the skill might cause. Many other skills that were most penalized by this change, such as Essence Drain, have had their damage improvements to compensate. Similarly... Any damage over time applied by a hit was previously considered area damage. If the hit that was applied is considered such, that's the same thing as a projectile. 
Um, so like Bladefall, for example, if you go Poison Bladefall, it will scare you, scale with area damage. In the beta, damage over time is only considered area damage in cases where it is being applied in an area. If moving out of the area means you're not taking that damage anymore, then it's area damage. If you can't get out of it by leaving um, its area of effect, not area damage. That means that effects like Vortex or Burning Ground placed by a Fire Trap deal area damage over time. If something just applies separate damage over time debuffs to each thing in the area, such as Blight or a group of enemies being ignited by the hit of a Fire Trap, then that is not considered area damage. In addition, Bleeding, Ignite, and Poison are never considered area damage. So even in the case where an ignited or an Ignite is proliferated around an enemy, the Ignite's damage is not considered area damage. Next time we'll go over specific or skill specific examples and other questions that you have about anything we've talked about in this post or part one of the damage over time changes manifesto. If you have any questions about how mechanics or skills will work, please post it down below. You hear that YouTube? You post that shit down below, go get them. Or the YouTube comment section. Wow, that is like, that's like quite a bit of shit, man. I'm really excited, dude. I'm really hoping for some more um, build diversity. Not just build diversity, but I told people uh, before, people asked me, you know, if you had something you were like super excited for in the beta that they didn't announce, what would it be? And I said, I would like to see a new category of skill come out. And I know that's really difficult to just implement, but this is almost the same thing. This is saying the, the only way that you were able to play a build before, you now have multiple options. And that's almost like adding a new category because it's playing a skill and scaling it completely differently. That may actually allow you to play the skill on a different side of the passive tree, which could completely alternate the play style of the build um, and kind of just, you know outweigh the pros and cons and see what happens again. So you guys comment below what you guys think about it too because I'm super excited for it. Anyway, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. In fact, I'm actually live right now. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.